Good evening. Here in Syracuse, we are having a wonderful thunderstorm and drenching rains. Could not be more wonderful accompaniment to our Zazen. A key question in Buddhism is what is the self? And we're all familiar with the ego focused self, which we tend to think is who we are. But of course, that self separates us from others. And its inner refrain goes something like this. I need, I'm no good, I don't want to, I've got to, I can't. You may think of some other statements that seem very familiar to you. And it keeps us stuck in feelings of craving, fear, jealousy, and animosity. And it keeps us seeking distractions that we hope will protect us from pain and from the recognition of our eventual passing away. This is what the late Gaelic Rinpoche called the imposter self. When we identify with that small minded understanding of who we are, what results? Well, alienation, anger, loneliness, frustration, Resentment, accusation, misunderstanding, confusion, in a word, suffering. At the heart of all Buddhist teachings is waking up to the true self and our lives and the lives of all beings depend 
upon this. We cannot respond to the interwoven issues of our time, racism and injustice, the pandemic, poverty, ecological devastation. We cannot respond in any way that is helpful when we believe that imposter self is who we are. So experiencing true self is the most urgent matter. It is not in any way an abstract notion. It must be realized not apart from, but one with our unique and individual selves so that our thoughts, words, and deeds come from the wholeness of being. Most of you know Dogen's famous lines from his Genjo Koan. To study the Buddha way is to study the self. To study the self is to forget the self. To forget the self is to be enlightened by all things. To be enlightened by all things is to free body and mind of self and other. No trace of enlightenment remains, and this no trace continues without end. We are gathered here on this particular summer evening, or some of you maybe morning or middle of the night, in the year 2020, because we are studying the Buddha way, not from a conceptual or intellectual approach, but from a sense of being called What is our life for? What are we here for? Especially at this challenging time. We are being called to walk the Buddha's way. And the starting point on this path 
is one's own self. It is not found outside ourselves. So we investigate. We engage in one pointed concentration. Hakui Nekaku Zenji in his song of Zazen tells us if we concentrate within and testify to the truth that self nature is no nature, we have really gone beyond foolish talk. Now, you might ask, what does that mean? We can't grasp self nature is no nature with the rational mind. It just keeps us going around in circles of foolish talk. And it requires deep investigation, continual investigation, a superficial understanding leads to erroneous views of indifference and spiritual bypassing in which one might say, well, if self nature is no nature, then I can ignore the suffering I see around me and I can transcend the difficulties I feel within me. I'm sure you know that this would be a nihilistic and very harmful misunderstanding. So we must go deeper to concentrate within is to do Zazen with a burning question. Who am I? Or what is my true self? Or what is my? We sit with the question, within the question. We rest in the question. We don't seek an end point. Oh, once I get the answer to this, I'll be fine. No. Every answer that comes forth, not this, not this. Letting go again and again on each long, slow exhalation, relinquishing everything, we find that there is no unchanging 
substance. We can call the self. There is no particular construct that we can point to and say, oh, that's who I am. So with nothing to hold on to, nothing to be determined by, all ideas about the self are forgotten. Forgetting the self. Entering into no self, no concept of this, just this is what happens. We meet all things, all phenomena, as none other than the self. The 19th century Dogen scholar Nishiyari Boksan commented, the true practice of the Buddha way is that there is no self outside of the Buddha Dharma. There is no Buddha Dharma outside of the self. The Buddha Dharma is none other than the self. That's how he put it. To study the Buddha ways, to study the self, and to study the self is to forget the self. And to forget the self is to realize that there is no self apart from the Buddha Dharma. So in forgetting the self, we are enlightened by all things. Whatever we encounter, we are one with the body of the universe. We return to the source point of our being, to our original self, and we can testify to the truth that self-nature is no nature. There is nothing that separates us from the entire universe. In all its amazing variety, I look around on my screen and I see Tom in Idaho. I see Dylan in California. I see Kushu in Austin, Texas. I see Ryoju in New York City. This amazing multiplicity
allows us to awaken to who we truly are. When we realize it is not in any way apart from us. It's not that we are seeing it. We are being seen. As So San Ganshi Zenji, the third ancestor, put it, when the 10,000 things are viewed in their oneness, we return to the origin and remain where we ever have been. And Dogen concluded, to be enlightened by all things is to free body and mind of self and other. No trace of enlightenment remains, and this no trace continues without end. Simultaneously, body and mind, self and other, drop away. It is in this traceless freedom that we come forth as the unique and unrepeatable individuals that we are. Our actions come not from some small view or preference, but from the unconditional, unlimited truth that manifests according to and in harmony with specific circumstances. Who we are now, where we are now, how we are now, we are now. So this is the, the critical paradox of self-nature is no nature. Because of the inherent emptiness of self. Our true self knows what to do. There is nothing in the way of our clear discernment when action is called for. We cannot abdicate our responsibility to this planet and to all our relatives who live on it, seen and unseen, heard and unheard. So we must respond. We must show ourselves in the 10 directions as the koan take a step from the top of the 100 foot pole puts it.
Shodohara Roshi puts it this way. True emptiness does not arise from a preconceived notion of nothing at all. It is what comes forth when the mind holds on to nothing, when in each moment and in each situation we can function freely. That's our practice. This functioning freely is what Hakuin teaches at the end of the Song of Zazen. To regard the form of no form as form, whether going or returning, we cannot be any place else. To regard the thought of no thought as thought, whether singing or dancing, we are the voice of the Dharma. form of no form is form. The self of no self is self. There is no separation. Each of us is here for a reason. Each of us has a great vow. Coming from no form, wherever we are, we are always on the path always in this very place. Coming from no thought, we are the voice of the Dharma in our own tone, our own breath. We heard a very good talk on Sunday from Seho Morris. He was so generous and kind. And of course, I've invited him to give another talk when he can. But you know, we are the ones who have to study what's going on. Do the work. Know this country's history. Know what the indigenous, what the people of color have endured and are still enduring. It's up to us to recognize our privilege, not to ask black and brown people for advice on how to wake up to it or how to make our own communities more diverse. 
this is why I continue to engage in this uncomfortable topic, okay? We are the ones who need to speak with each other. Ask the hard questions. Admit our ignorance of what it's like to be a person of color in America. Are we willing to walk a mile in another's moccasins? as the indigenous saying goes, to be allies with wide open eyes and hearts and to keep at it. I'm sure there are many people who want to say, okay, that's enough. We had our protests, that's that, let's go on move on with our lives. What a wonderful expression of privilege that is. So here we are, each in this unique form, and we are experiencing our world through this form, but only when we realize that form and no form are not two. That form is exactly shunyata, emptiness, exactly form. Can we bring our experience of oneness, of sameness, into the world of differentiation. With the clear mind of Zazen, we work within differentiation knowing that every one of the 10,000 things, each one of us is none other than Buddha nature revealing itself right here and now. thundering through us, breathing through us, barking through us, trembling through us. And this is how the Dharma function through us. This is how we offer ourselves to all beings.